everybody, Fabulous Mr. Fox here for Roleplay Roulette with another satellite video for our review of Iron Claw Squaring the Circle. I'm a little bit excited to do this one because we've actually gotten several requests for it. Today I'll be talking about Iron Claw, the Book of Jade. Now I'm going to end up screwing up and calling it Jade Claw a lot, so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. If I say Jade Claw, most of the time I'm going to be referring to this book. I'll try to specify when I'm talking about the original edition specifically. This is actually a pretty big deal for the setting, because previously only Calabria was detailed with only slight references to other places throughout the world. And Calabria is actually a fairly small island comparatively. This of course includes Zhongguo itself, a sprawling empire which is roughly analogous to feudal China. However, in addition to that, it also has the kingdom of Yindu, which is a bit more analogous to India, obviously. Now, if this particular book has a failing, it's that only Zhongguo is really detailed among that. We get little to nothing about the Nine Tribes or the Western Emirates. I'm not actually sure what their culture is like. However, the many kingdoms of Zhongguo are pretty heavily detailed. There's a lot of information about their government, their day-to-day -day life, their law, their religion, etc. And, as any good wuxia story should, there's a heavy emphasis put on martial arts, its practitioners, and their disciplines. Now, one of the major changes between the previous edition and this one is that Calabrian fighters are now a lot more on par with Zhongyi's fighters. Previously, there was a really disparate level of power between Zhongyi's martial artists and just fighters in Calabria. As a more general fan of period combat, that's always something that kind of irks me. The new edition, however, fixes that completely, because the entirety of the gift system is actually very akin to the way Jade Claw, like the old Jade Claw, did its martial arts. However, the gift systems that are presented in the Omnibus feel a bit more baseline. They're very utilitarian, they're very straightforward. And that's really good, because it gives the Book of Jade a place to really shine. And where it does that is flavor of combat. There's all kinds of really cool, unique schools of martial arts. There's all kinds of general martial arts that supplement what you can do with combat from the core book. There's a new gift system called the Empty Hand Method, which was in the original Jade Claw, but it was really, really difficult to use and obtusely designed. Now it fits in with character creation and the flow of combat actually a lot better. But Fox, you might be saying, what if I'm not into making a martial artist and I want to make a wizard? Jade Claw has that for you as well. The good news is, is that there are entire new schools of magic. Also, like in the Book of Mysteries, there's a bit more variety to the magic. It's not nearly as combat-centric as the core book is. This is another place where I need to bring up a deviation from the original system to this one. Or when I mentioned that Calabrian fighters really couldn't stand up to Zhongyi's fighters in the original edition, Zhongyi's wizards really couldn't hold a candle to Calabrese wizards. They were just hands down better in their write-up. However, this edition has taken both and brought them to a nice median ground. So if you do want to play a Zhongyi's wizard, you'll be on par with a Calabrian wizard, and it's pretty excellent. From a system perspective, this is also the place where we start to see that thing that I was talking about in Myriad Song, where gifts have keyword descriptors that help let you know what they do right away. It's not very heavily used here, but there are some new ideas. The Book of Jade demonstrates a clear evolution on how the game is presented. It's cleaner, it's more efficient, and there are some new ideas that are starting to shake things up. Now, some weird little minutia that I've noticed as somebody who played the original edition transitioning into the new edition. For example, there's always been this neat little rivalry in the fluff between the Beggar School and the School of Drunken Boxing. This remains, but what is different is that in the previous edition, the Beggar School wasn't really worth taking, while the Drunken Boxing School was quite outstanding. So in this edition, they seem to have swapped places. Beggar School is rather amazing, and Drunken Boxing is yeah, kind of lame in this one. There's also a major difference in the way the Forest Ghost School is written up. In the previous edition, it was kind of clunky, and while it was really cool, it was a little bit cumbersome in the rules department. So if ninjas are your thing, you'll be happy to know that in this edition is actually much better designed. On the other hand, the Black Tortoise School, which was previously one of my favorites, doesn't work nearly as well. If you if you haven't seen it, Black Tortoise style is that idea of martial arts where you do the Qigong thing and just end up becoming unstoppably tough. Like Ryoga from Ranma One Half after Cologne tricked him into getting the crap beaten out of him until he couldn't feel pain anymore. In the previous edition, this was a really, really good school to couple with something else because it allowed you to go unarmored into fights and still be able to hold your own. In the new edition, you're more likely just to couple it with the generic martial arts because a major change that happened is that they require you to 
use a shield to get the effects of most of the gifts. Now this is kind of a personal problem that I have, and it's not an actual issue with the system at all, but it did make it so that Johnny Artie can't remake one of his characters in the new edition. Another criticism I have, and I'm not sure where this comes from, is that it feels like there's less in this book than there was in the original edition. And I don't mean that from the perspective of characters. This brings back all of the new races of Jade Claw, and I'm not sure, but I think it might actually introduce a few more. And I actually believe that there's more martial arts stuff here than there used to be. But for some reason, it feels like there's less world info, and I don't know if it's just because the book is smaller because it doesn't have the core engine in it. Which, by the way, if you want this game, it does require the omnibus. It is not a standalone the way Jade Claw is, but there's something about it that just feels thinner. I can't really explain why, and I may be totally off base on that, so don't quote me on it. However, if you're playing Iron Claw already, I heavily recommend this book as an addition as it will bring all kinds of new options for your characters, and if you are a game host, an entire continent of new places and styles. And if you're just thinking about getting into Iron Claw, go for the Omnibus first. If you like it, you're gonna want this. Or because it pretty much brings nothing but more, and it's really quite well written. So I'll be back later this week to talk about the third Iron Claw supplement that currently exists, the Book of Adventures. Until then, I'm the Fabulous Mr. Fox, this has been Roleplay Roulette, and I can't wait to see you next time.